presence together to seek his rule and reign. We bow our hearts, we lift our hands, we turn our eyes to you, God, again. Receive our adoration. Let's do that as we come and worship God together this day. Let's stand. Into his everlasting. 
flows through my veins And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave So I could walk right through it My fears are drowned in perfect love You rescued me so I could stand and say I am a child of God You split the sea You split the sea so I could walk right through Praise you, mighty God. We thank you that you call us into your presence. We thank you for the salvation work of Jesus in our lives. And because of Jesus, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Be powerfully at work here in us. And through us, here as we're gathered, and as we are sent and scattered away from this place, in Jesus' name, amen. Great. Well, welcome everybody. We're going to talk uh, Bible in a moment, but a uh, couple of pieces of information, things happening. There's something about chaplaincy for those that would like to find out more? Yeah, there's a great chaplaincy team in Clevedon that looks after um, the retail and businesses in the town centre and Hill Road. And you want to recruit some more chaplains. We do need some more chaplains. Um, so there's a meeting on Wednesday the 3rd of November at half past two here yeah. for anybody from any churches across the town who wants to come and find out more about chaplaincy. So if you've got a bit more time now or thinking about what you could do, how God wants you to serve him, come along to this introductory yeah. meeting. doesn't commit you to anything. It doesn't. You don't get a it? uniform that day. No. <laughs> but there's a really nice grey and green uniform yeah. um, if you sign up. So um, Wednesday the 3rd, so the week after next, to come and find out more about being a chaplain in Clevedon. That would be great. And then um, let, let's talk Christmas. Because Christmas. Christmas is coming. <laughs> Destination you, Bethlehem. You started your shopping? Well, I most have, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be into this panic buying, but... Don't but, tell your mum what you've got her, because she might be watching. Oh, I won't say that. <laughs> well, we, we just, <laughs> we're, we're doing it. So, yeah. yeah. But Destination, so Destination Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Every year we've done an interactive journey, which takes us to Bethlehem, sharing um, the Christmas story. And we're going for it again this year. And um, we were looking for people to help. Yeah. You can be good at acting or catering or scenery or costumes or just encouraging the team or helping with the school children. Yeah. So there's two weeks when we need everybody to help. If you can only do one day, if you can only do the weekend, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Um, we've got some speaking parts, non-speaking parts, cleaning, setting up. We need you. And it's a great team. So if you've never done it before, just come along. And uh, let me know, let Auntie know, email the office uh, what your availability is um, before I email you. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we're having to, obviously because of 
the circumstance we find ourselves, it's great the schools can come in, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. It's going to be less numbers, uh, hopefully less chaos, rather than 100 children trying to turn around in the hole. We can't do that this year. So we're going to do it in a slightly different way anyway, but uh, we need the team out doing it. We need and, the team, uh, and you need to be thinking about who you want to invite on the weekend, of the 4th and 5th of December. Yeah. It'll be tickets for your friends, your family, neighbours to come along. Yeah. Um, so think about who you can invite this year. Great. And um, we're going to think about the Bible. I'm going to do a reading first, actually, because last week we were thinking about um, prophetic vision, and one of the tasks was to get into the scriptures, and so, um, and certainly the prophetic scriptures. So we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, we're going to be in Daniel seven this morning, and I, I wanted to, to read a little bit of Daniel seven now. Uh, uh, this fantastic passage that's here in our Bibles, um, and I'm going to start at the end. Actually, Daniel has this vision. And Daniel says, uh, I, verse 28 of chapter 7, I, I was terrified by my thoughts and my f face was pale with fear. And so uh, this, this was a dramatic impact uh, vision dream that Daniel has. In fact, Daniel 7, in fact, this next bit of Daniel has been described a bit like a kind of a roller coaster ride. And I like that because I, I love a roller coaster ride uh, as we ride into kind of God's future presence as we live in our, our troubled, turbulent now. That's kind of Daniel 7 onwards. This kind of fascinating, scary, uh, exhilarating, you kind of can't get off the ride journey. Uh, Heart-thumping thrills as we're taken to kind of lofty heights, as we're pulled away from our now into, into something, wow, almost beyond our senses. And then the twists and turn with downward spirals as we are plunged into the low points of, of, of the valleys of despair and gloom and death, those g-forces of the cosmic spiritual battle around us and so Daniel 7 is is thrilling scary frightening exhilarating it's here to uh, provoke powerful feelings to create pictures and perspectives and to communicate truth to us so let's get a bit of flavor of Daniel 7 earlier during the first year of King Belshazzar's reign in Babylon, Daniel had a dream. He saw visions as he lay in his bed. He wrote down the dream, and this is what he saw. In my vision that night, I, Daniel, saw a great storm churning the surface of a great sea with strong winds blowing from every direction. Then four huge beasts came up out of the water, each different from the others. So you get the picture here. The first beast was like a lion with eagle's wings. As I watched, its wings were pulled off and it was left standing with two hind feet on the ground like a human being and it was given a human mind. Then I saw a second beast and it looked like a bear. It was rearing up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and I heard a voice saying to it, Get up, devour the flesh of many people. Then... The third of these strange beasts appeared. It looked like a leopard. It had four bird's wings on its back and it had four heads. Great authority was given to this beast. And in my vision that night, I saw a fourth beast, terrifying, dreadful, very strong. It devoured and crushed its victims with, with huge iron teeth and trampled their remains beneath its feet. It was different from any of the other beasts. It had ten horns. And as I was looking at the horns, suddenly another small horn appeared among them. Three of the, of the first horns were torn out by the roots to, to make room for it. The little horn had human-like eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. I watched as thrones were put in place. And the ancient one, the ancient of days, sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire and a river of fire was pouring out flowing from his presence millions of angels ministered to him Mi many millions stood to attend him then the court began its session and the books were opened and I continued to watch because I could hear the little horn's boastful speech I kept watching until the fourth beast was killed and its body was destroyed by fire 
the other three beasts had their authority taken from them and they were allowed to live a little while longer. As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient One, the Ancient of Days, and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honour, sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never, it will never be destroyed. I, Daniel, was troubled where you would be by all that you'd seen, I'd seen, and my, my visions terrified me. So I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant. He explained it to me like this. Well, you have to find out what it meant. And that's the Bible. We're really keen, aren't we, to get the Bible into people's hands. Now, the great thing is you can do it on a tablet, you can do it on a phone. Uh, I use a thing called Bible Gateway. You can go on there and you can get all the different versions of the Bible and you can use it that way. So there's loads of kind of Bible apps. But if you like to have the kind yeah. of the, the paper copies, we've got... Yeah, I think today reminds us when we're focusing on the Bible how precious God's Word is. And if you haven't got a copy of the Bible, we've got some at the church you can have yep. today. If you're watching this service online, just message us and we'll get, we'll get the Bible to you. to you. And we've got this lovely coloured version of Mark's Gospel as well that's something really great to, to give out to people. a starting point, if you say, well, how can I start with the Bible? Mark's Gospel would be a great place to start, yeah. wouldn't it? Get hold of one, ask us for one, ask a friend who's a Christian for one, but uh, make sure you can read God's Word. We're thinking about the importance of God's Word, aren't we? And we've got uh, some video that we're going to watch and then we're going to do some uh, praying together. So we'll watch this video. God's word. It's amazing, right? You know, between us, my wife Kath and I have got study Bibles, paraphrases, pocket-sized Bibles, backpack-sized Bibles, even triple XL-sized Bibles. See, in our lounge, on top of the piano, we've even got a family-sized Bible taking pride of place. You know, the kind that would give you a hernia if you try and pick it up. What I'm trying to say is, we're not short of Bibles. And that's before you even pick up your smartphone, an array of apps with your favorite passages at your fingertips. You know, 200 years ago, a 15-year-old Welsh girl called Mary Jones walked a marathon of miles for a Bible. It speaks both of her hunger, but also the scarcity of scripture. Well, that's what started Bible Society. But you know, even today, not everyone has a Bible, do they? Off the beaten track in Malawi, Sangwe Church, they're doing some great things. There's this library scheme they've set up where children can freely rent out a Bible and bring it back. Only issue is, there's so little Bibles and so many children, sometimes kids have to wait six months just for their turn. Imagine that, waiting half a year just to read 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient. Then there's Zidu, a Chinese pastor who looks after eight separate churches and has to hike hills and scale cliffs just to deliver a sermon. I mean, don't get me wrong, the growth in the Church of China is incredible, but the pastors and teachers are thin on the ground. Just ask Zidu. And what about George? who's heading up our Bible mission work in Syria, connecting with vulnerable believers who are struggling to deal with the trauma of a decade of war and now need hope more than ever. And what about closer to home? We may have access to God's word in this country, but are people opening the book? The reality is we're grateful because with your help, we get to give out tens of thousands of printed Bibles in Malawi every year so kids don't just get to loan God's word, but keep it. We're so grateful because with your help, we're setting up scholarships for students that can help pastors like Zidu shepherd the flock in China. We're so grateful because with your help, we get to help George partner with local churches in Syria to walk alongside vulnerable believers in their ongoing trauma. We get to be part of helping them find healing as we point them to the Bible as the great source of comfort, love 
wisdom and guidance. And what about on a doorstep? We're running 28 Bible courses in prisons and we get to open the book and tell Bible stories to over a million children at school assemblies on a regular basis. To say we're grateful to you, it's an understatement. Not just for your gifts, but for your prayers. The reality is you're a blessing and you're blessing real people, real churches, real communities on the ground. Thank you, because the reality is this could not be done without you. We're going to pray. I'm going to read a Bible verse, then a sentence for you to think about, and then a short prayer. So also will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to. Isaiah 55 verse 11. How is Bible reading part of my life each day? Am I listening to what God is saying through his word? Lord God, the Bible is a gift that brings truth, hope and freedom to our lives. Help me to hunger and thirst for your words. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15, 16. Are you eager to read God's word and allow it to shape your perspective and actions? Lord God, guide me when I read your word. Speak to me through the scriptures. Help me to seek you, listen to you and obey you. Psalm 18, 28. For it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. In what ways can you walk more closely with God? Identify a step you can take. Thank you that I have been reached by your word. Please create opportunities for the Bible to be shared with more people here in England and Wales, as well as around the world. Please inspire mission workers, church leaders and individuals to communicate your promises to others. And in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 it says, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Do you always remember to fall back on God and his grace during difficult times? Thank you, God, for giving Bible workers the world over the strength and courage to continue their missions during the pandemic. Please, Lord, keep the outposts spreading your word open during this challenging period. Amen. Amen. stand as we worship again together. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me Change to come, knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet. The still stands. Great is your faithfulness. my confidence you've never failed me yet and I know the night won't last your word will come 
God is so close, He never gives up on us. His love never fails, never fails. Cause our God is our King, a sovereign friend. Love you, Lord, my shield. 
more time out of you, I'll go and rain. Oh, hallelujah, I'll go and raise. Oh, hallelujah, I'll you reign over it all. Please sit down. And John, perhaps you could put my um, pictures up. That would be great, thank you. Well, what a passage to come to today. We've already explored Daniel chapters 1 to 6, and now we pick up uh, the rest of this fantastic Old Testament book, uh, The Road Ahead. And yes, I do know that there are different ways people view and interpret uh, the, these details, these aspects of these Daniel visions, and you may have already worked out yours. And yes, there is difficulty with some of these Daniel verses, but the main message of Daniel stands true and that's why it's here in our Bibles. It's here to give God's people hope into anxious, chaotic times, to inspire faith, to inspire hope, to inspire worship, to help us live in the presence, uh, in the present and to infuse faithfulness and confidence in us. See, Daniel 7 need not mean that we end up as mere end-time speculators or just as forensic dream detail interpreters or investigators or finding ourselves only as end-time timeline creators but as whole life disciples, as we engage with God's prophetic word, God's word will impact us and it will shock us and it will strengthen us for today. It will move us, it will inform us, it will challenge us, shape us, enable us to grasp hold of truth and to build solid hope into our lives. As one commentator put it, despite the welter of interpretations, there is one thing above all that this chapter is proclaiming. Hear it, the Most High is the reigning King in heaven and earth. There is an opposition to his rule, formidable in appearance and powerful, but all the time the Most High is in control, even when his opponents seem most successful. Therefore, those who are allied with him triumph also. And in verse 17, if you used to look at that, we take hold of the truth that though we may not understand everything that is happening all around us and what is happening in our nation and in the nations of the world or what's even happening in Daniel 7, we do know this. As we look ahead, Daniel was terrified, but all he'd seen, my visions terrified me. I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant. He explained it like this. These Four huge beasts represent four kingdoms that will arise from the earth. It enables us to make sense, you see, of what is happening in the world uh, and where things are heading. This is the road ahead. Then it says this in verse 18. I love this. But in the end, but in the end, the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom. worth underlining that, highlighting that if it's your Bible and you do that kind of thing. 
They will rule forever and ever. That's because Daniel speaks of an ancient of days, one like a son of man, and the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom of God. Uh, a writer called D. Brent Sandy uh, has written about uh, this kind of biblical literature, and he uh, describes six functions, and you can take a screenshot or take a photo or note, note these six scenes down. They're, I think they're important things for us. As we come to passages like this, he says these six things are, should be operating in our lives, that there is a call to worship, that there is comfort, that, look, look God is in control. And so we're reminded that... Uh, that that God is great, we, we can stand, we can choose this morning, uh, choose this day, choose this week to stand in awe of the sovereign Lord of the universe in worship. But at the same time, uh, we, we are comforted as, as we're given new hope that uh, the evil in this world will eventually come to an end, that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then thirdly, we, we get this kind of insight into... Uh, cosmic issues, this spellbinding, as scenes of heaven uh, reveal the cosmic battle between good and evil. There's more going on than, than just human beings. And then we get hope for, for, the, for the persecuted. It's kind of like a battery charge to increase our resolve to press on and keep going. There's this assurance of God's victory, this exhilarating image of God's personal visit to the earth to correct all wrongs, punish all the wicked, create a radically new world. And there's this call to purity as our lives are challenged for the things of this world are temporal, are tainted by sin. And those who remain faithful will eventually be honoured with the, the glory of the new heaven and the new earth. Well, there's six things, six functions, and you, you could start with one that you're drawn to or, or one that you most need. Maybe you need that kind of assurance of God's victory into your life. Maybe the, it's that comfort that you know that God is in control. Hey, maybe you just want to step and stand up in, in, in his presence and, and worship him. Start somewhere with one of these. But don't forget the other five. Find ways of engaging in all these five Things. Well, let's get into Daniel and a way to, or Daniel 7, a way to understand, view this, this dream vision is from two perspectives, uh, from below, because we get this imagery of the sea as, as empires, nations, rulers arise out of the turbulent chaos and disorder in history, in this fallen, broken world that is living in sinful rebellion against the rule of the living God. And so uh, we, we get in those opening verses, I already read them, of Daniel seeing a great storm churning up the surface of the great sea, strong winds blowing from every direction, four huge beasts coming up out of the water from below. <clears throat> and then we can view, as it were, from above, from the sky, as we glimpse one who is the Ancient of Days, on the throne, in the throne room of heaven, on the move, <clears throat> who judges. And as my vision continues, says Daniel that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds. It is up there in the clouds coming down to us. From below, out of the turbulent, chaotic, restlessness, seas stirred up by demonic fallen powers from behind and mixed into these rising and terrifying empires are evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, mighty powers in this dark world and evil spirits in the heavenly places, visible and invisible thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, the powers of this dark world, dominion, authority and power at work 
in the world. And we get these four beasts as they arise out of the, the chaos and the turbulent sea. And then we've got the kind of, the, it's a lion, but it's not a lion. It's got eagle wings. And, and then there, it's, a, it's a bear and it's rearing up on one side. And it's got ribs in its mouth and in its teeth. And then there's this, this leopard-like creature. And it's got four wings on its back. And, and as Daniel looks, it's got four heads. It's given great authority. And then in my vision that night, I saw a fourth beast, terrifying, dreadful, very strong. And, and he sees iron teeth in it and, and big trampling feet. And, and it, it has, it's different from all the other beasts. And it has ten horns. As I was looking at the horns, suddenly another small horn uh, appeared among them. Look, we, we did muddy church last week out on the farm, uh, and we did cows. <clears throat> and the advice given to us, sharing it with you, because you weren't all there at Muddy Church, good advice, don't stand near the back of the car cow when its tail is doing this, <laughs> because it gets very smelly and quite messy. Here's more advice, don't stand in front of a horned animal, especially if it's in a bad mood. Seems to me that standing by the side of all animals seems to be the safest um, option. A little bit of pastoral guidance there for you. But you know, horns, they signify power. It's about attack and damage and strength and battles. Uh, and, and perhaps the horns here are, are, are picturing armory and weapons and, and aggression and fighting and, and headbutting and, and so on. And, and this fourth piece has ten horns and now there's another one. And we get with these four beasts, a picture of empires rising up as his history continues to record humanity plunging down to new depths of chaotic fallenness. The specifics who and when and where, there's all kinds of question marks over that. They're not given, they're not identified. We're probably meant to see them at multi-levels of fulfilment. Some see the, the, the four historic empires flowing from Daniel's days as significant, from Babylon through to Greece or possibly even to the Roman Empire. Uh, others, uh, for example, see the second animal, the bear, as present-day Russia. Daniel 7 is a window for us to look through and see what is happening around us today uh, and what will happen until the last four empires take their stand, we have this snapshot of world history. And it's this fourth boast, boastful um, beast. I have to move my pictures on. For some reason, this is not working. John, can you move it on? Thank you. This fourth uh, boastful beast that Daniel wants explanation about. So I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, the one so different from the others, so terrifying. I also asked about the ten horns on the, the fourth beast's head and the little horn that came up afterwards and destroyed the three others. As I watched, this horn was waging war against God's holy people and was defeating them. Then he said to me, the fourth beast is the fourth world power that will rule the earth. It will be different from all the others. It will devour the whole world, trampling and crushing everything in its path. Its ten horns are ten kings who will rule the empire. Then another king will arise, different from the other ten, who will subdue three of them. An antichrist ruler. And against instead of Christ, uh, John, uh, in his letter, 1 John 2, tells us that there are many antichrists operating even today, right now. Antichrist, uh, against Christ, or instead of Christ. See it operating in all kinds of ways in the world and even in our own nation around us. But in the end, 
there be one who will arise. He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. And if you look at uh, uh, Daniel 7, verse 25, you, you see the features of Antichrist or the Antichrist. They defy the Most High. They dare to do that. They oppress the holy people of the Most High. Literally, they wear them out because that's part of the tactics of the enemy, to wear out the saints of the Most High. And then interestingly it says, he, they, he will try to change their sacred festivals and laws, try to get rid of sacred worship and moral practice, or already going on around the world, and he wants to control God's people. Verse 25, they will be placed under his control for a time. But it's limited in time. So it says for a time, times, and half a time, for a year, two years, and half a year, for God is always in control. And he will win through. But the court will pass judgment and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. See, we have these terrifying animal beasts arising, but we also are alerted in these visions to these human figures and people. An ancient of, of days, it says. Uh, I watched as the thrones were put in place and the ancient one, an ancient of days, sat down to judge. The God who reigns, if you want to understand that, that phrase, ancient of days, God is always. God is always there, here. From, from back then, right now, right now for Daniel as he sees in his dream, the ancient of days, this morning as we come to the word of God and as the spirit of God takes these words as, as we see right now God is there, always there and on into the future forever. An ancient of days. His clothing was as white as snow. His hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne. And I love this bit with, with wheels of, of, of blazing fire because God is not kind of trapped. He's on the move. moving through history, moving across the nations, moving in this nation, hey, moving in this town, in this church. God on the move and a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. And it talks about how the court began its session and the books were opened, God's holy judgment on the deeds of humanity recorded in these heavenly books. God is ancient of days, always. And then he looks and there's more uh, as he sees this is someone, and Daniel's trying to write it down, it's, it's someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. And he approached the ancient one, was led into his presence, was given authority and power and sovereignty over all the nations of the world, the Son of Man on the clouds. We can see one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds. It's actually how Jesus viewed himself. 29 times in Matthew's Gospel, he uses Son of Man about himself. High priest at his trial stood up and said to Jesus, what do you have to say for yourself? I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus replied, you have said it, and in the future you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. It's Daniel 7, on the lips of of Jesus about himself. The what do you see in the clouds? We, we was on holiday uh, in, in Devon and we uh, 
I had this hot tub, Joe and myself, and we sat there. Uh, when I wasn't sleeping in it, I'm uh, recovering from, from hours and months of ministry here. Um, uh, um, uh, we, 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 sometimes we couldn't play the game because it's such a lovely blue sky uh, in September, that lovely couple of weeks. But sometimes the clouds were coming and we, 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 we're, we're easily pleased people. We, we played the game, can you see in the clouds? See the horse there, or the elephant, or the poodle dog. If you're looking for confirmation about a poodle dog today, there you go. There's one there for you. Well, there's Winnie the Pooh. These are not my photographs, by the way, in Devon. Uh, so just in case you thought we had a wonderful time. But there is the USS Enterprise uh, coming into view. But as we was on holiday, we sat in the hot tub, and I said, Joe, I want you to know that I, I really do love you. And if you look up into the sky right now, I've arranged for a cloud to come, just come past. And there it is, just to, well, I'm waiting for that moment, but when it happens, uh, hope Joe's with me and I better say, <laughs> but there, 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 there you go. What do you see in the clouds? You see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. What does that speak of? It speaks of his ascension into the presence of God, having been crucified, risen. He ascends, because the other use of the Son of Man is not just about his future glory, but his suffering, death and resurrection. We see the Son of Man ascending. And of course, we see him coming again. Then it says in verse 27, then the sovereignty, power and the greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to, and you have to double check this, it's, it's, what's it say? To the holy people. It's us. Of the Most High, his kingdom will last forever and all rulers will serve and obey him. The eternal Divine kingdom comes not only into the human hands of the, the, the one Son of Man, but now also through him to all his people. How's that possible? Because the Son of Man suffered and died and was raised and has ascended and will come again. And we are involved in this. We're not just spectators, but we are recipients of this coming kingdom, all made possible because of the Son of Man. See, Daniel wants us to know that God's not turned his back on, on his people then or on us now. Yes, the immediacy of our problems right now and our anxious fears, of course they can preoccupy us. Especially as we see a world going wrong and going wrong and going wrong, despite all that it tries to do, even as it starts to, to talk together and, and, and powers in all shapes and forms seem to be rising up around us, seem to be in control bossing and pushing and trampling us down. But God is able. He has, he is able to now, and he will intervene radically, unexpectedly, sovereignly, powerfully, decisively into history. So don't lose heart. Look, an ancient of days, look, that the Son of Man coming on the, the, the clouds. Look, given to us because of Jesus, the everlasting, eternal kingdom. This is the road ahead for us. So don't lose sight of the bigger picture, says Daniel. Look, see Feel it, observe it, hear it, take it to heart. 
Yes, there is more than often meets the eye. Look, his coming on the clouds and kings and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Shall we stand? Declare the truth, this faith, as the Spirit of God takes God's Word, puts it into our lives for this coming week. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kings as will bow down. Every chain will break, this broken has to clear his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, is the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, and he's fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, is the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God, He comes to save. A God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, is the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and he's fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. And our God is the Lamb, is the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. We know His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Well, who can stop the Lord Almighty? stop the Lord who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord 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 Almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? And our God is the Lion, He's the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and He's fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb, is the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. We worship you, the God Most High. We thank you for that comforting word that you are reigning, that you are in control. Lord, we see uh, a battle going on, not just between human beings and nations, but this whole spiritual warfare taking place in history. We thank you, Hope for when we're under pressure 
and when we are being persecuted. We thank you for that assurance of your victory. We hear that call to purity, you, the God of holy fire. Fashions fade, favourites are erased, A-listers evaporate, God stays the same, God is always, always there. Machines rust, innovations turn to dust, computers crash, God stays the same, God is always, always there. Politicians U-turn, new solutions crash and burn. Headlines become yesterday's news. God stays the same. God is always, always there, the ancient of days. Who was, who is, who is to come? Look, he's coming on the clouds, the Son of Man. So let's go into God's world. And seek first his kingdom with joy and peace and love and solid foundation, rock solid hope in our hearts. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Creator, Redeemer, the Sustainer, the Ancient of days be with us all. Amen.